Hey everybody, it's Bob Crossan, Senior Managing Editor for Water and Waste Digest. I am joined here today by Ashley Waples. She is Product Manager for PMT and Ditch Technologies for Veolia Water Technologies, as well as Pia Proheska. She is Senior Process Engineer for Veolia Water Technologies, and we're going to be talking all about total nitrogen. So thank you both for being here. I really appreciate you taking the time. Yeah, thanks for having us. Yeah, it's great to great to talk to you about this uh, th this particular issue, total nitrogen and total phosphorus, both big issues I know that Veolia is talking about. But Ashley, could you give us a quick rundown? When we're talking about total nitrogen, what are we talking about? What is total nitrogen? Yeah, so scientifically in wastewater, what, what total nitrogen is, is the sum of all nitrates, nitrites, organic nitrogen, and ammonia but it's a naturally occurring biological nutrient. So it's found in our water, in our soils, and of course our waste. It's used by plants um, as nutrient, and most notably it's a compound, or it's, it's made up in the compound chlorophyll molecule, which we all learn about in elementary school as part of being photosynthesis. So it enables plants to capture sunlight energy by photosynthesis. Um, that's what gives plants their lush green colors, right? Um, so we see it a lot in fertilizers, right? So that is what we put on our grasses to make them green and grow and um, as well as our house plants, that sort of thing. So it is naturally occurring. It's important to our ecosystem um, used by plant life to, to sustain life. Yeah. Well, and I know that there's also this difference between total nitrogen, TN, and then uh, total TKN, which I'm going to butcher this, the pronunciation, which is total Kedgedal nitrogen, I believe is how a lot of Americans pronounce it. But um, Pia, could you talk a little bit about the difference between those two things, about TN and TKN? What makes them different? Yeah, many people don't really get that different. Um, TKN is basically the the sum of all nitrogen incorporated in the organic matter and together with the ammonia also. When you talk about total nitrogen, then you also, as, as uh, Ashley mentioned, you also add the nitrate and the nitrite. Okay. So, okay. so that's kind of the differential. So TKN, sum of organic nitrogen and ammonia and total nitrogen, then you add the nitrate and the nitrite as well. So how do people measure these things? Obviously in wa wastewater applications, you need to kind of make sure that things are in balance correctly. How, how are you measuring these things to make sure that you are make, meeting certain requirements? So um, so when we look at wastewater treatment plants, or like designing of wastewater treatment, um, you normally look at the TKN when we look, talk about influence. So when we design a plant, we, we get some BUD, COD, TSS and we get a TKN value and some total phosphor and, and then of course a flow. And then, um, so the TKN is just the organic matter as I, as I said before and, and the ammonia. And the reason why we don't talk about total nitrogen um, in, in, in the influent is because there's really no nitrate normally in the sewage system. Uh, so it's not really, a, it's, not a, it's not a parameter that you need to measure there. Uh, it, when we talk about the effluent, uh, then the total nitrogen is a totally, that's a totally different thing because then in the effluent, we have produced nitrate in our, when we are, uh, when we are, excuse me, um, removing the total nitrogen, we are actually producing some nitrate. So there it's very valid to measure the total nitrogen. The difference between the two, uh, one is that the, the TKN or total Keldale nitrogen is the sum, as I said before, of ammonia and the organic matter. It is measured in one, in, in, it's a sum, so you measure that together. And by taking the sample, you're decomposing the sample by adding acid and you're heating it up and then you can measuring it. If you are avoiding the heating and the addition of acid, then you would only measure for ammonia. So it's the same method you measure ammonia and total, uh, TKN, but um, but it's it's either that you're decomposing or like you're you're what do you call it breaking down the sample uh, into ammonia, uh, the whole sample, or you're just going right for the ammonia. 
in order to get the total nitrogen, you also have to do a test for nitrate and a test for nitrite. So total nitrogen, when you, you when you get that test, actually consists of three different parameters that you have to add together. So I know that utilities are looking to remove total nitrogen from their systems. Ashley, could you talk about like why we want to remove that and whereabouts in that process is the most effective way to do that? Yeah, so we look at removing total nitrogen as part of biological nutrient removals because when we treat wastewater, we then discharge it into surface water, into rivers, lakes, streams. Um, so it goes back into our ecosystem, which is this balanced living system. Um, so as we discussed earlier, total nitrogen is a nutrient um, that can affect how things grow. Um, primarily, uh, the component of total nitrogen ammonia is acutely toxic to uh, fish, that kind of thing. So if you've ever heard of like aquatic toxicology, there's lots of testing um, done to make sure that our ammonia levels or total nitrogen levels aren't too high when they're put back into rivers, lakes, and streams to keep fish alive. Um, so that's like a key component uh, as to why we wanna remove ammonia just because it is acutely toxic, mm -hmm. as well as the total nitrogen component itself um, helps things to grow like algae. So when we have algae grow on the surface of our lakes, um, it can uh, block sunlight from reaching the bottom of those lakes. So then any kind of animal or life source that's living on the bottom isn't getting that necessary sunlight to be able to sustain life. So it's, um, it's causing imbalance in the lake, as well as, um, as that as that algae is growing and living on the surface of lakes, it's uh, it's actually producing BOD, which then in the fall when the algae dies off, uh, um, it it actually steals the available oxygen, the BOD does, from all the from all the life in the lake. So then life doesn't have oxygen, which it needs in the water. Um, so depending on where we're discharging, uh, we have different biological nutrient removal requirements. Mm -hmm. um, that's based on regions. Obviously, Great Lake regions have different constituents than maybe like Arizona. Um, it, <laughs> it just, it depends on where we're discharging, right? Mm -hmm. um, so you've probably heard about total phosphorus already and and that's a big one when we're discharging to big bodies of water, as well as total nitrogen, of course. Um, so we we remove it, we want to remove it with our biological processes. That's where it takes place um, at the plants for wastewater treatment plants with a biological process step, such as our Kruger oxidation ditch um, that's using phasing between aerobic and anoxic modes um, to remove both ammonia and total nitrogen. And then we have other processes such as our biosteer process and our MBBR and IFAS that all can be used to remove total nitrogen and ammonia to different levels or to different um, requirements based on the location and the discharge. So Pia, could you talk a little bit about the products, th those specific products and what, what's going on with them to remove total nitrogen? How is it being removed? Okay, so in the different products, uh, it is actually the, the, the same processes that they are, they are using the same processes. And it's, it's a combination of different uh, groups of bacteria and, um, and then you apply different process conditions to, to, to the system to get the nitrogen removed. In, in real life or like in out in nature, the, the, the normal way of, of removing nitrogen will be first that you have your organic nitrogen, the, you have your bacteria in your environment that would in, that will have use enzymes to break down these organic, uh, these organic matters into to, to CO2 and into ammonia. And then the ammonia will, with the help of oxygen and bacteria again, and these bacteria are autotrophic. So these bacteria really do not use any BOD. What they do is they, they use the nitrogen, they use the phosphor, and then they use the CO2 from the water 
to actually produce um, more bacteria. These, these uh, bacteria are called the nitrifiers. There are two groups, and uh, oh, excuse me, there's two um, steps in that one. First, you have your ammonia with some oxygen that is, is converted to nitrite. And then right after the nitrate is, is produced, then uh, another group of bacteria uh, will, um, will further oxidize the nitrite to nitrate. Then when you have your nitrate, then this is, uh, this, these two processes, they use a ton, excuse me, not a ton, they use a lot of oxygen to actually get this done. So that is why that wastewater treatment plants are very often very energy heavy. You have to use a lot of, you have to put in a lot of air in the water to get these oxygen conditions and to remove the ammonia and whatever BOD you have at that stage. Uh, then after you have produced your nitrate, uh, you want to remove that because uh, that that um, that will also that will definitely have an impact on on the ecosystem and will produce a ton of, of algae in it if not removed. And the way you remove that one is that now this this group of bacteria that that remove that one uh, use nitrate instead of oxygen to oxidize the remaining BOD. So this group of bacteria will not like to have any oxygen presence. So there you turn off the aeration system that you have, or you would have a separate reactor with only mixing and no aeration, no air added um, to, to uh, the process. And what will happen there is the nitrate will be, um, uh, will be converted into free nitrogen that will go up into the atmosphere. Uh, and that's how it's done. And um, so nitrogen is actually removed by, by converting it, it from ammonia or from organic matter to ammonia to nitrate, and then finally up to nitrogen uh, that uh, is going up to, yeah, going up into the air <laughs> and being mixed. It never ceases to amaze uh, me the, the, technical, the technical elements of things like this and just how much is going on and how much you guys have to think about <laughs> when making yeah. a product like that. So when, you, so when you look at the different ways to remove it and, and you look at the designing a wastewater treatment plant, as Ashley said, then you start, it is a combination of what is coming in and how 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 um, and what do you want to achieve and how much space do you have uh, on it and then of course there is a, there's a lot of, of options of optimizing the process and that's where Veolia comes in and have that product knowledge um, choosing the, the, the right products and, um, and and very often also do a lot of optimization so, so we can uh, we can actually uh, do it with small volumes and um, and and um, conserve the energy for 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 aeration, which is substantial. Yeah. Well, thank you both for taking the time to talk to me about this today. I, I did truly learn a lot about this, not just from the water perspective, but also the brand, the grander importance of nitrogen in our in our ecosystems. But thank you both for taking the time. And for everyone who's watching, be sure to check out the video description below. We'll have some links to some WWD resources as well as some links from Veolia. And once more to both Ashley and Pia, thank you so much for being with me today. Yeah, thanks, Bob. Thank, thank you, you so much.